Hello and a very warm welcome to Weekly Current Affairs. Today is Saturday and we will be taking up the miscellaneous components of those articles that have been figured out in various newspapers. If you are watching this video for the first time, this is to let you know that this is a Weekly Current Affairs series where we cover up articles based on the subject wise from Monday to Saturday and Saturday I Madhusudan Reddy will be taking up the miscellaneous components. And see, these are one of the best articles that can be utilized for the examination purpose and also the chances of these, ex these articles being asked in the examination is very very high especially from the preliminary point of view so here we are to take up three articles that is your first article which deals with the e-waste recently the government has come up with the e-waste management rules which are drafted and these draft rules are out now but not yet notified we are going to discuss what are the issues that have been figured out in the e-waste draft rules as well as there is an international organization which has given some reports regarding the e-waste what is that that we will be discussing and the next article we will be taking up is the curious case of the rhino it is said that the height of the horn of rhino is reducing since last few decades. Why is this happening? It is said that it is a reaction to the human habitations and human activities which are being influencing the environment. Now the next article we will be taking up is the Wangla dance or the 100 dumb dance which is fa very famous in the northeastern region. So we will be discussing in very comprehensive manner so please stay tuned to stay till the end of the video. Right? So let us quickly begin with the first article. Our first article is a newspaper which is Hindu newspaper published article and also there are a couple of articles in the down to earth and there is a government notification which has come up with the draft rules. Now what are these draft rules? These draft rules are meant for e-waste management rules, e-waste management rules. See here e-waste management rules, it is not for person like you and me but these are rules which are meant for managing of the e-waste. right? In this management, there are some amendments that have come up. Now, in this amendments, are they in line with the international norms or are they in line with the domestic goals or are they in line with the Environmental Protection Act? This we have to check. Before we check all of this, let me give you a brief why this article is in use for another purpose or other reason. See, recently there is a forum called Waste Electrical and Electric Electronic Equipment Forum, which is a Collection, which is a forum made up of collective entities of near about 46 e-waste producer responsible organizations. See these words seems to be little dynamic in nature, it is very easy, see there is a forum, this forum is a collection of 46 odd producer responsibility organizations. I will be explaining you what is this producer responsibility organization in the next few minutes, but understand this committee, sorry, this forum has come up to say that in the near time future, this year itself, we are going to increase 5 billion mobile phones additionally and we are going to add more number of mobile phones. And they have extrapolated by the data that they have collected in the Europe to the rest of the world, they said that near about the data we are going to double in the next 2 to 3 years. And this has been also been peer reviewed as well as by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research Sustainable Cycle Programs. So let us these are bodies which are associated with this article. Before that, we go very detailed into this article. Firstly, let me define you what exactly is an e-waste. See, an e-waste is something when a product which you have, imagine a mouse, a mobile phone, an electrical equipment, any product which is electrical in nature and that electrical product is no longer in use and it turns out to be an unproductive utility product in your home and that turn, that will be your e-waste. Now this e-waste has various classifications and all these classifications can be understood in different formats under the extended producer responsibility. What is that? Again, I will explain this in the next few minutes, right? Firstly, the definition here, it says that any electric waste that includes various form of electrical and electronic equipment that are old discontinued and cannot be used anymore. These are your electric waste. See, knowingly or unknowingly, today the middle class Indian society has 50% of most of these products which you see it on the board. You yourself might be one of the e-waste generated without your knowledge. I am pretty sure anyone who is watching this video might at least use one or two mobile phones in their lifetime or else at least their household people might have used two three mobile phones now where are those mobile phones and where are the equipments of electronics that have been spoiled are they lying in the dump yards or are they lying in your own home in your dashboards or in your cupboards or somewhere put in the corner see that turns out to be your e-waste 
today the scale of e-waste is very huge now why do people either throw this e-waste into a dump yards and they are not aware of how to use this e-waste in a different way where which it can be recycled all these questions will be addressed in the few minutes first let us try to understand the genesis of the e-waste policy in india e-waste policy comes into picture in the early beginnings of the 1972 in the 1972 when the environmental the major push factor for the environment came up that is also we also thought to think in the lines of the wastage but electronic as a boom came to india only after 1990 when we opened up the lpg reforms so the genesis also starts from here that is the initiation phase in this 1986 lakar 2003 but our electronic consumption is not much there so slowly we went into the draft phase which means we thought that from now on we should have some draft policies in these draft policies we have to think in the futuristic angle and deal with this e-waste so already e-waste it doesn't mean that only electronic equipments which you see it in the surface of the earth but in the atmosphere also you have some electronic waste that also need to be taken into consideration e-waste is also found it in the space that is also dealt with the space debris space waste that also comes under your e-waste right any electrical equipment that comes under your e-waste now there are some rules and regulations and some acts that deals with the e-waste firstly this is for the preliminary examination point of view the first one is hazardous waste management and handling amendment rules so this rules were first notified in the year 2003 the extension of these rules itself you will get to see in the guidelines for environmentally sound management of e-waste which came up in 2008 the nature of the e-waste has changed in the year 2012 say later 2016 tak. why see we started to use more waste we started to use more products and generate more waste because of which the nature of the rules also need to be amended we started to concentrate more on the wastage and we thought of smart cities in the last five to seven years so that's why as we started to grow we also started to bring in e-waste management rules and we went in from the draft stage to developmental stage to implementational phase in the year 2017 and this is called as the implementational phase aaj bhi implementational phase mein hai now what is this implementational phase we are generating the e-waste and that e-waste is collected that collected e-waste is now being recycled in this process there are some rules that are given to the producers there are some rules which are given to your consumers like you and me who use the mobile phones and electrical equipment and also there are some media mediators or middlemen who can handle this kind of situation if the situation persists to be bad right now let us quickly move the e-waste management rules or the draft rules are amended now that is 2022 what are the changes that have been bought out from the e-waste management or amended rules of 2018 say 22 this we have to ask right clear now let's quickly move ahead and get into the details firstly let us look into some facts which are given by the report the report says that the world today has near about 16 billion mobile phones out of this it is said that 5.3 billion are going to be non-usable in conditions in the next one year see to give you the magnanimity of this number you need to understand the total world global population is not more than 9 billion by 2030 it is estimated that we are going to be 9.2 billion that means the total number of mobile phones today is near about double the population which we are collectively across the world right this is the first point the second fact which we have to know about is as per the waste management rules and amendment it says that the classification is generally done on the basis of the size of a product a size of a product can be as big as a refrigerator as big as a reactor an industrial e-waste or else it can be as small as your mouse as well right so they have categorized this e-waste into small electronics and accessories like your headphones remote tv remote chote chote this stencil can be a small one a pencil which you use electric pencil these are small electronic equipments and the second type of equipment is called small equipment that is clocks and irons ob electronic equipment the third one is small IT equipments like hard drives, routers, keyboards. Like that, the classification is on the board. You can clearly say out of this, the total number of wastage that is going to increase in the next one year is near about 25 millions of 
e-waste we are going to collect it through small equipment that is through mobile phones and smartphones and small food preparation appliances this is the area where the total generation of waste is going to increase and next to this the government program of Ujala where the government wants to produce the LED bulbs at a cheaper rate and that LED bulbs today across the world is utilized at a larger scale but people don't know how to use that after it is no longer functionable do they need to throw it in the dustbins or do they need to keep it with them they are not aware see the size of the LED bulb is very small but the product or the electronic waste is very big in it because of which the e-waste that is generated to the LED bulb is very very huge now out of all of this most of the people they do not want to dis dismantle or give away the electronic waste mostly they give to their local vendors who are nearby and in and around they will be coming maybe sometime you might have heard about people asking that koi electronic waste hai to hum hame de do so in return you will be paid some amount of money right so collectors are here and there but is that collection a going through the proper means and channel that you have to ask for yourself see usually it will not be going through a proper channel why you know electric waste has some gold within it you know electronic waste has so much of gold within it how much gold you will be surprised to know that electronic waste which consists of chips and other materials it has gold which is almost equivalent to 1 kg when you start to take out one ton of e-waste so that's why people will not be wishing to give away the e-waste at a cheaper rate even the vendor or a local vendor who collects the dust dust and other waste from your home he will also be very much interested to, to take that e-waste and what do they do you know instead they giving these materials to the other advanced proper channelized mechanism where e-waste is used instead they themselves will start to burn that to extract the gold from that electronic waste a tv a remote or maybe a small mobile phone all of this has sizable very very negligible amounts of gold within it but imagine there is a report that came up says that by the numbers if you go if you start to mine or Saath ki saath, you, when you start to compare the amount of mining which you do you start to dig a gold mine in that take one ton of mining ore and extract a gold hardly you will get near about 10 grams of gold that is one tula of the gold but you take same amount of e-waste and melt it finally extract the gold from it it will be near about 1 kg that is 1000 grams so obviously no one would be leaving that electronic waste and finally giving back to the producer right this is the biggest issue which we are facing in the e-waste management rules in order to deal with this the government has come up with some strategies now what are those strategies let us quickly get into see there is a big chart that is involved with the e-waste firstly you need to know few terms whenever you are dealing with the e-waste management rules the first one is extended producer responsibility which we have come up with the 2018s e-waste management rules in the extended producer responsibility is for example if you are a producer and you produce this mobile phone or any electronic waste it is also the responsibility of you to collect 50 percent of the total waste that you have generated and bring back to recycles right suppose you own a mobile phone and that mobile phone has a company so a company is usually involved in making those mobile phones right but do they have the strength do they have the capability to set up an electronic waste unit and then it goes to the consumer it goes to the retailer it also goes through the waste distributors and that waste distributors they give out some kind of waste back to the producer and producer obviously they do not waste their energy on recycling them instead what do they go for they go for creating some organizations these organizations are nothing but producer responsibility organizations ticket pros a manufacturing company which man manufactures electronic waste is one such company which employs or which gets in tie up with a producer responsible organization this producer responsible organization has some functions what does it do it tries to connect with imagine this is one such producer responsibility organization and its role is to link up with many number of producers because not every producer have that capability to recycle and the cost of estimation of recycle will be high so that's why 
a producer responsibility organization which forms upon its own and then they starts to tie up with many producers maybe electronic waste of phones are there imagine this is an x brand this producer organization will go and tie up with y brand z brand apple ke saath bhi one plus ke saath bhi micromax ke saath bhi oppo all these companies they tie up and they say that jitne bhi waste hoga we will collect that waste and will get back to you right for that you need to pay me something right this is what is called as the producer responsibility organizations earlier the producer responsibility organizations in the 2018 rules they are mostly confined to tying up with the producers and they themselves has some dealings here this producer responsibility organization it collects municipal waste it also collects the e waste from compliance national authorities and logistical services also it takes care into at times this producer responsibility organization itself will establish an industry that deals with recycling right it also deals with this recycling clear now let us go back and try to understand today how many producer responsibilities in india do we have as per the central pollution control board it says that today we have near about 74 pros and 468 authorized dismantlers which have a collective recycling capacity of 1.3 million tons only it only has 1.3 million today at, across the world we are trying to generate the waste of 5.3 billion see where are millions where are billions understand the rate of generation and the rate of recycles it is a huge mismatch the need for the e waste collection is very very important instead when the local vendors they start to melt the all the materials of the e waste along with the gold they extract the gold but the rest of the materials will enter into your ponds lakes crops soils and finally without your knowledge you will be consuming it in terms in most of the materials there is also a material in most of the equipments there is also a material called mercury see this mercury material is very heavy and that is it is completely banned in the usage but unauthorized use can also be misused and this misused material can get into a food chain through that food chain there can be biomagnification this biomagnification can lead into accumulations and then later bigger kind of diseases a large scale accumulation into the human body can be seen so that's why it is a very big threat the concentrations of the government is very huge in into this e waste now let, let's come back here so i told you that the, the extended producer responsibility role is to collect the produced amount of material at least 50% okay at least 50% they have to recycle whatever they produce now they are utilizing pros and this pro is itself nothing but one of a recycle agent bhi ho sakta hai ek management committee bhi ban sakti hai through this it starts to collect the waste or else it will tie up with various organizations of the ground level and then this pro will tie up with epr right till now this is the principle which is being followed by the e waste management rules now came up the draft amendment rules in this draft amendment rules what they have said is that instead a pro getting and tied up with the epr now a, let us quickly deal with the problem that is associated with the relationship between pro and epr pro says no longer you are supposed to tie up with a company instead you go and collect all the waste in the market and then the government is planning to give certain certificates to them these certificates are nothing but they have collected this much amount of waste and whoever want to buy these certificates or whoever want to buy the credits now the company will come and buy right earlier maybe a mobile phone company it has generated so much of electronic waste now 50% of that company cannot extract all the waste now maybe the mobile utility is for 10 years in the 5 years itself some mobiles get damaged you don't know how much amount to be extracted on how much amount to be left over so that is the biggest problem that's why what did they do is they used to tie up with the pro pro if pro is having a good relationship with one company and that company will be applying its norms and complying with the norms with the e waste management rules but what about the rest of the company if pros are not in a good relation where do they go so they have to set up their own mechanization own process of recycling so that's why it is a very big task now the control was always in the producer responsible organization so that's why the government has come up to say that from now on i am going to kill this in the draft management rules it said that suppose 
see here current rules a pro and a manufacturer they have a tie up and recycling on the contract basis they used to do but now what they said is that a pro producer responsibility organization will start to collect so much of waste and then they themselves will keep that waste recycle it and after recycling they'll give a certificate that this much amount of the waste is i have recycled whoever wants to buy come and buy these credits right so this would be a easy mechanism but here also there is an issue the issue is that all the pros in india they do not have recycling agents they are just a management firm or management authority which deals with multiple organizations so how come a pro organization can recycle so much of waste this is the first question when they do not have sufficient amount of support from the industries then also the manufacturing as well as the producers as well as the consumers there is not a tandem that is established now coming back to the other difficulty here see in this pro as well as the draft management rules it is a positive thing which is seen firstly it is said that the new waste management rules says that epr may kuch naya products be add kiya jaye what are these new products they have added the household electric waste also into the extended producer responsibility for example you have some a cooker rice cooker that rice cooker was earlier not part of the epr that means the company if it is produced it no longer need to take care of these electronic waste only bigger equipments like which has so much of electronic waste within it those materials are being used do put under the epr but now all the materials of the households they are also put into this epr so by this the ambit of the extended producer responsibility is very bigger by this it is also indirectly hinting that all this electronic products might get little more costlier you know why it is because a company when it has to recycle it has to collect the same amount of funding at the time of production itself why maybe at the time of the production of this mobile phone the cost is around just imagine maybe 20000 or 30000 so if this cost of the product is 20 to 30000 rupees in this you as a consumer you will also be paying for the recycle cost at the beginning itself so it is the duty upon the producer itself to take care of the recycling that is called your epr but when these products are not having the epr responsibility obviously the cost of the product will be less now you add epr component to this the cost of the product again increases right so this is something which the consumers are not happy with and the retailers might lose their share see here there is a small flow chart how exactly the funding mechanism and the physical material of the e waste flows usually the producers when they produce they will give some data to the producer responsibility organizations they give some reports and they give some data also humne itne sare products produce kiya government ko bhi they will also give data they will also give data to the pros now pro in return it will coordinate with the municipal organizations it will coordinate with the recyclers it will also coordinate with the consumers now door to door jaake collect karne mein to kafi mushkil hai kahin na kahin to solution nikal ke aana padega now that solution is the draft management rules says that instead you going from door to door it is a very costly affair it is has recommended that the state government should now go for setting up a recycle units and that recycle unit should be set up in more or less in the district administration itself if not a recycle unit at least a collection center but today we in india without getting anything in return for the product which you give you won't be willing to give but when you look into the foreign aspects foreign there will be centers that will be set up and these centers they will collect the e waste e waste at free of cost you will not be paid anything but the mindset within the indian nation is that any electronic product when you wanted to throw away you expect some kind of material back so obviously that's why to meet with the epr goals the government along with the companies they always offer an exchange on the old product that is also part of your epr but it is not a successful entity because not all the products will go into the exchange finally a product has to get dismantled through one or the other means that means here the government should take the responsibility the awareness should be increased theek hai government should take the responsibility in setting up collection centers if you do not have collection centers obviously the material will be stayed in your dump yards that too within your home or closets the second one is get in the municipal corporation into field collecting agents there should be a funding mechanism that has to be decided whenever you give out e waste right 
and keep a check on the local e-waste collectors and their smelting of that e-waste because that is a very big problem which can enter into the food chain. So these are some of the recommendations which we can think of along with the public awareness for e-waste management, e-waste imports hum band karna chahiye. India should have a robust mechanism to deal with the e-waste. There are multiple problems at the producer end, at the consumer end. At the consumer end, awareness is a problem. At the producer end, cost is a problem. In between, the producer responsibility organizations has collectivity logistic issues. So all these problems are not clearly mentioned in the draft management rules. The draft management rules are yet still in the draft phase as and when if they are enacted or comes into act, we will be taking up these articles again. That's it for this article. I think sizable amount of information is there for you to write a very good answer, right? And we are going to the next article. Our next article deals with the a dance form that is 100 drum dance or a dance which is called as Wangala dance. Wangala dance is a dance which is practiced by Garo Hill tribes. They sing along and dance along with these drums. Why is this in use? Yesterday this festival has been celebrated in Garo Hills. Garo is part of Meghalaya, Garo, Kasi, Jayantia. These three hills are part of your Meghalaya. In this Meghalaya, the 100 drum dance has some significance. Men, they start to beat the drums. While beating the drums, they sing along, they dance along. Women, they start to dance along with the men. Now here, this is a festival of harvest. It is also a festival to say that goodbye to the summer and welcome to the winter. It is a winter harvesting festival or starting of the winter festival. Right. In this dance forms and in this festival, they pray to the sun god saying that that's why it is also called as Saljong. Saljong here it is nothing but sun. It is a sun god of fertility. Now, what is this fertility? Fertility is not about the human fertility. They talk about the crop fertility. Right. These are articles that can be asked in your prelims examination. The chances are very, very high in the art and culture. The next article which is published in the Hindu newspaper, it is published yesterday. It says that, that the curious college shows that rhino horns are shrinking day by day. Now, what do we have to learn in this article here? One, the relationship between the humans and the environment, especially the humans and the rhinos. It is said that the impact of humans have now reduced the size of the rhino horn. How come rhino horn size has been reduced because of humans? See, rhino is the most poached animal, most hunted animal. People hunt the rhinos for their horns. So over a period, the data has been collected by the organization since the last few decades. They have collected even the data, the picture, pictographical representations from various near about 1856 acre. And by comparing all of these data across the species and they have also compared other elephant species, all other species, major healthy animals, jinka size kafi bada hota hai, right? And they have come up to a conclusion saying that elephant did not face that problem, but rhino is facing the problem. Now, why is this rhino facing the problem? Because the hunting and poaching activities in rhino is very, very huge. The number is very large, right? Nextly, for the preliminary examination, it also becomes very important that what are the types of rhinos we find in India, you will get to see. See, in India, you will get to see only one rhino, that is one horn rhino. But across the global level, you have five different types of rhinos. In this five different types of rhinos, especially the critically endangered rhino, that is Sumatran and Java rhino, inka kafi, the horn size is very, very small. That is what they say. Hardly, their numbers, if you see, it is less than 100 numbers in both Sumatran rhino and Javan rhino. In India, we have near about 3500. When you go to the Africa, you have two different types of rhinos. One is black rhino and the other one is white rhino. See, in this white rhino, you have two sects. The first sect is called as northern white rhino. This northern white rhino may arch be only two female populations are left in the wild, right? Mostly they are found in the Africa, in the African range, you will get to see that the ranges of these rhinos have been changed from one place to another place, right? In this, it is said that only two northern white rhinos are left within the northern white rhino. See, the total population of white rhinos is near about 15,000, but in that, an other subspecies, which is white rhino, only has two northern white rhinos. So this becomes very, very important for us. And also this kind of studies gives so much of significance of the impact of human beings on the wildlife, right? Now, why this white rhinos have reduced, sorry, white rhinos have reduced their size. The size it has reduced because firstly, 
it is trying to adapt to the situations since last few decades right and quickly let us look into the status here black rhino which is not found in india it is found in africa it is critically endangered white rhino it is called as near threatened kyunki inka population 17000 hai but lekin inka jo subspecies hai the subspecies of white rhino is having only two population next is your one horned rhino it is found in india it is the status is vulnerable javan rhino it is critically endangered jinka population is less than 100 also sumatran rhino this is also critically endangered right and lastly the five rhino range nations this is also you need to know some preliminary aspects factual content hai india nepal bhutan indonesia and malaysia these are the countries which are called as the five rhino nations they are going for dna profiling so that the data of this dna can be identified and they can use it for the further preservation activities along with this you should also know that the rhinos were once present across the western belt se lekar eastern belt but today the rhinos are only concentrated in the northeastern region they are mostly absent on the western front why because this rhino is being subjected to so much of poaching activities and hunting activities during the time of british advent they considered this rhino as a trophy species someone who have killed rhino someone who have got the horn of the rhino they are considered themselves to be very great and they used to consider that this is a trophy animal i have to do it i should do it right so that's why this animal has been poached and finally as the national parks of assam are in news again and again so let us quickly see what are the national parks of assam which are found in firstly there are seven national parks sixth one is raimona national park which has been given the status in 2021 and the seventh dihang patkai national park it has also got its status in 2021 only let us see raimona on the western side manas orang nameri kaziranga kaziranga is famous for your one horned rhinoceros the latest that is dihang patkai and dibru saikova these are also the national parks which are present in the assam this is a very important uh, content for your prelims and i hope this could be very helpful to you a seize the main questions seize the mains question will be shared link in the description if you want the ppt of this the ppt of this content please go to the telegram channel of raj malhotra is there you will get this content at free of cost and if you do like this video and you think that we are enhancing your content please press that like button and do share with your fellow friends stay tuned for next saturday i madhusudan reddy will be coming up with more relevant articles and more enhanced content thank you and see you guys on next saturday